What is Kwanzaa? How did it start? Is it a holiday? These are some of the questions we will answer in this video. Thank you for watching the Matter of Facts channel. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more fact-based answers to unusual questions. Dr. Maulana Karinga, American professor of Pan-African Studies at the California State University at Long Beach, established Kwanzaa in 1966 during the aftermath of the Wazirat and the Black Freedom Movement. Kwanzaa is a non-religious, non-political, African-American holiday that celebrates family, community, and culture, and commemorates the African heritage of Black Americans whose ethnic history was stripped away by the slave trade. The holiday also gave African Americans an alternative to the Christmas holiday and an opportunity to celebrate themselves and their history rather than imitate the dominant society's practice. Professor Karinga believed that Christianity was a white religion that black people should shun. But as Kwanzaa gained mainstream acceptance, Professor Karinga changed his position so that practicing Christians would not be alienated. As stated in the 1997 book, Kwanzaa, A Celebration of Family, Community, and Culture, Dr. Karinga said Kwanzaa was not created to give people an alternative to their own religion or religious holidays, but to reaffirm and restore our rootness in African culture. So Kwanzaa is a cultural rather than a religious holiday and can be celebrated regardless of a person's faith tradition. Many African Americans who celebrate Kwanzaa do so in addition to observing Christmas. Kwanzaa's creation also underscores the essential premise that you must have a cultural revolution before the violent revolution. The cultural revolution gives identity, purpose, and direction. The name Kwanzaa derives from the Swahili phrase Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, meaning first fruits. First fruit festivals existed in Southern Africa and celebrated in December and January with the Southern Solstice. The celebration dates back to ancient Egypt and Nubia. Professor Karinga chose Swahili as the language of the festivities because it is a Pan-African language, not necessarily defined by a particular region or tribe. Also, Professor Karinga was particularly inspired by a account he read of the Zulu festival Unkosi Wosolowa. He decided to spell the holiday's name with an additional A to have a symbolic seven letter. Now that we have a brief history lesson on Kwanzaa, let us talk about the six exciting facts you might didn't know about the holiday. Number one, Kwanzaa centers around seven principles. The seven days of Kwanzaa are a time of celebration, meditation, and recommitment. The focus is on the Nguza Saba, or seven principles. On each of the seven nights, the family gathers near a table containing seven Kwanzaa symbols. A child lights one of the candles on a canara or candelabra. On the first day, the black candle in the center is lit, followed by the alternating the red candle on the left and the green candle on the right. After lighting a candle, the family discusses one of the Nguza Saba's principles. Individuals are encouraged to reflect on the principles throughout the holiday and embrace them in their own lives. An African feast called the Karamu is traditionally held on December the 31st. The Nguza Saba are central to the celebration of Kwanzaa and to the African-centered values that embrace the importance of celebrating one's own culture through meaningful, constant remembrance and connection to the ancestors. The Nguza Saba emerged from Kawada philosophy, which evaluates the best of African thought and practice. Now that we have a better understanding of the Nguza Saba, or the seven principles, let's discuss each principle that represent a different day of Kwanzaa. The first principle will be Umoja, or unity. Umoja stresses the importance of togetherness for the family and the community, which is reflected in the African proverb, I am because we are. We believe that everyone in our community is responsible for one another and that by working together, we will achieve great things. The second principle is Kuji Chagulia, or self-determination. That one may define themselves for themselves. It isn't just about you or me, it's about us, our community, and how we celebrate our culture and independently use our resources to self-determine our future. The third principle would be Ojima, or collective work and responsibility. This means that one's successes are shared throughout the community and vice versa. 
We are collectively responsible for our achievements as well as our setbacks. We must build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters problems our problems and solve them together. Yes, to whom much is given, much is expected. The fourth principle would be ojima'a, or cooperative economics. What this means is that sharing what one has with others to benefit everyone. It teaches us to support one another and to build businesses that benefit the whole community and help it thrive. The fifth principle would be nia, or purpose. This is self-reflection and action and meaning. It's not enough just to have money. Yes, you can pay the bills, buy food and other things you want, but your life will have much more meaning if your money is used for a purpose. And the sixth principle will be kuumba, or creativity. Expressed in art, work, thoughts, and acts, creativity means to perform acts that leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. And the seventh and last principle is imani, or faith. To believe with all our heart in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. The second interesting fact about Kwanzaa are its symbols. Kwanzaa has several key symbols that are used as artifacts to teach, remind, and inspire those in the application of Kwanzaa principles. The basic symbols used to celebrate Kwanzaa are, number one, vibunzi, or ear of corn. The vibunzi, or ear of corn, symbolizes fertility and nurturing during Kwanzaa. Thus, one ear is placed on the MKK for each child in the family. If there are no children in the home, two ears are still set on the MKK because each person is responsible for the children of the community. Africans are reminded that child rearing is communal or tribal affair that involves virtues of discipline, respect for others, compassion, and charity. The second symbol would be mazio, and there are the crops that represent African harvest and acknowledgement of productive labor. And the third symbol, as mentioned earlier, is MKK, and that is the Kwanzaa mat, which represents a foundation of our tradition and history. And the fourth symbol will be Kinara. Kinara is the candle holder that represents continental Africans as our roots. And the fifth symbol will be Muhindi. Muhindi is the corn that represents our children and our future. And the sixth symbol is Mishuma Asaba, is the group of seven candles that represent the Kwanzaa seven principles, Nguza Saba. And the seventh symbol is Kikambecha Omaja, is the unity cup which represents the principle of unity as the basis of all Kwanzaa principles. And the eighth symbol is Zawadi, are gifts that represent the commitments made and kept. And the ninth symbol would be Bandera, also known as the Afro-American flag, Black Liberation flag, the UNIA flag, is the flag which is a supplemental symbol and color that represents Black as the people, Red is the struggle, and green is the future and hope. And the tenth and final symbol is a poster of the seven principles of Nugoza Saba. This will be printed and displayed. The third interesting fact about Kwanzaa are its gifts. They're homemade and educational. In order to avoid the over-commercialization of Kwanzaa, gifts or zawadi handed out to family members on the seventh day of Kwanzaa are often homemade. These gifts are meant to represent encouragement, self-determination, success, and growth for the person receiving them. Some participants buy books, music, art, accessories, or other culturally themed products, preferably from a Black-owned business. The fourth interesting fact about Kwanzaa are its colors. The colors Black, Red, and Green are a reflection of the Pan-African movement, representing unity for people of African descent worldwide. Black represents the people, and Red is for the noble blood that unites all people of African ancestry as well as the bloodshed during slavery and the civil rights movement, and grieving is for the rich land of Africa. And now the fifth interesting fact about Kwanzaa are its United States Postal Service stamps. The first U.S. postage stamp to commemorate Kwanzaa was issued on October the 22nd, 1997, by self-taught artist Cynthia St. James. Her designs were revalued three times to 33 cents, 34 cents, and 37 cents in 1999, 2001 and 2002. A total of 133 million Kwanzaa stamps were produced in 1997. Artist Daniel Minter introduced a new self-adhesive 37-cent Kwanzaa stamp on October the 16th, 2004. 
In October of 2020, a new Kwanzaa stamp designed by art director Antonia Akala and Andrea Pippins was part of the Postal Service Forever stamp compilations. And a sixth and final fact about Kwanzaa, a few U.S. presidents have wished the nation a happy Kwanzaa. When President Barack Obama and his wife, Michelle, occupied the White House, towards the end of December, they would issue a statement to all those celebrating Kwanzaa. We know that there are still too many Americans going through enormous challenges and trying to make ends meet. But we also know that in the spirit of unity, or Omoja, we can overcome those challenges together. Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush released similar statements during their time in office. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Matter of Facts channel and please like and click on the bell for notifications of future videos.